here is everything above this hinge pin, and we had the force arrow there, and this, uh, this load out here. Everything you see in that picture is considered as total moment, and it equals the boom plus the load. If we just go for moment of the boom, we just take the load line off of it and the load, and we can see that this, this uh, center of gravity is going to float in and out as you extend and retract the boom. So it's kind of a floating mixture of, of weight. <coughs> the moment of the load is the load at its horizontal distance from the pivot. That's how, that's how it calculates the load. I'm, I'm mumbling on about this, this, uh, this pivot radius. You can see here you have the pivot radius, which uh, is between the, the pin at the tip of the boom and the actual hinge pin. It's called the pivot radius. That's, that's the measurement that we use to calculate moment. Then we have the radius, the load radius, which is uh, based on the load chart the center of rotation from the load chart to the center of the load. You have another little measurement in here that's called swing offset, which is just about always on a boom, on a, on a hydraulic boom truck or RT, is going to be a negative measurement. It's going to be behind, the heat pin is going to be behind the center of rotation. So that's automatically deducted, okay? So, in doing this deduction, this is how we're able to take a measure from the center line of rotation to the load and get an accurate radius because the computer's doing those deductions. The other item we have to include uh, is uh, boom deflections, okay? We found early on this caused a, a big difference in the amount of moment that was created the fact of how much that boom bent. And as these guys have got these booms longer and longer and longer, that deflection becomes greater and the radius becomes greater. So the system has to account for that. So our system has a calculation in it, which we call BDC, or boom deflection correction, which we take and send this boom out like this and load it up with about 80% of the rated load and then do a radius correction. And the system formulates a, a, a number, what we call an F factor, which calculates the deflection in the boom no matter what the, the length or angle is. Okay, one number does all of that. So basically what we come up with, input data for the calculation of moment of the boom includes lift cylinder pressure, boom angle, and boom extension. And what I'm leading up to here, a lot of people have the, the idea that on a moment system, you can make adjustments to the load. Okay? And on some systems, you may be able to do that. On our system, where we, we actually calibrate the transducers with dead weight testers, which is perfect pressure, uh, and that's all incorporated into the computer. It takes cylinder pressure, boom angle, and boom extension to properly record the boom moment and separate out the load. So that's why I say, you know, if, you, if you're gonna troubleshoot one of these systems, you can't do it by jumping in and start adjusting things. You have to start off with a tape measure, just like we calibrate it, okay? And just take some tape measurements. A lot of people think it's more work. It's actually less work uh, and gets you to the root of things quicker. Because I can take and put my tape measure on one of our systems and run about three or four different uh, boom moments or boom lengths and radiuses and tell you how good the calibration is on the system, you know, whether the system is properly calibrated, okay? So, so the whole point of this is all of these things in the system work together. There's no, 
yeah, I get these calls once in a while, and the guy says, well, my load's off. What screw do I turn? Right? And, and you can't fix it by turning the screw. It just isn't done. They want to adjust pressure. You can't adjust pressure. It's already set. Okay? Everything hinges on that boom calibration get done properly and within tolerances. So, on transducers, typically on a transducer, we work with what we call a Wheatstone bridge. What this is, is a series of uh, resistors that's laid out on a flat surface and bonded to that surface. And, and you have a, a zero in for, for zero out situation. You have a balanced input output. When you apply pressure to that transducer, and you actually deflect the surface that, the, that the, the, the bridge is bonded to, you change the resistance in them and you start getting an output out of the, out of the, out of the, the transducer. Here's a typical example. This is the, the old transducers we used to make back in the MEI days. And you can see here, this has a flat platen on it that's a machine surface. Uh, in fact, it's pretty thick. And then inside here is a hollow space where you put oil into and exert pressure on that oil. So when this surface bows, it actually wrinkles these resistors and changes the resistance and sends a signal out that the computer can decode uh, into load. Okay. So in theory of operation, the system compares actual load versus rated loads and for the load chart. This was one of the beauties of coming into the computer world, because we were able to put the entire load chart of the crane into the computer and actually compare what's on the hook to what's on the load chart. Load chart perimeters, they've never changed. They're still length, angle, radius, and load. Okay, and this kind of fortifies what I'm telling you about this tape measure. It's one of the most important tools you can have in my book. The actual load is the load with the hook block or ball, cable, slings. The way we <coughs> refer to that, anything under the head of the boom is considered as load. Everything else is considered as boom moment. Okay, actual load computed by the method called total moment, which includes the load, the boom, and all the attachments. Here's a little diagram. That it's a really a simplified version of the system. And, and what I've done here, I actually took and put all the sensors on one side. You have your pressure transducers, your boom extension sensor, your boom angle sensor, your swing sensor, and then you have the computer. Everything inside this line is uh, something that the computer's doing. Calculations it's doing, what have you. It's just, uh, our job really becomes pretty simple. The computer has the hard job here of doing these pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of, of calculations. It's just unbelievable how much that computer can handle. Uh, so we have all these actions going on inside here, producing these outputs, comparing everything against the load chart. And then the output includes the actual hook load, a bar graph with percentage of rated load, the rated capacity off the load chart, length of the boom in feet and tenths, angle of the boom in degrees and tenths, and the actual radius from the center line of rotation to the load hook. <coughs> At the bottom, we have an item down here which we can't control, and that's the crane setup. That is totally uh, in the hands of the crane operator. And that's one of these uh, one of the reasons that I'm so adverse to calling this a safety system because it can't be considered a safety system as long as we have this operator out there that can 
for instance, set up and, and work a load, say in the outriggers are out when they're not. Okay? I mean, he has that capability. And so for that reason, it can't be a safety system. It has to be an operator enhancement. And what changes the actual load uh, on the load chart? Could be the crane on outriggers or tires, uh, an amount of counterweight selected, that would give you more or less capacity. Uh, a boom mode, uh, Terex has this RT-130 that's got two or three different uh, boom modes, one on the structural, one on the stability, this type of thing. The stowed or erected attachments, <coughs> My God, we, the gyms now are taking these things way up above 200 feet, and they definitely can affect the low chart. The hoist in use, whether you're using the rear or front hoist, uh, they have different shaped triangles on them, so they probably affect that somewhat. The parts aligned in use is a biggie. That definitely will affect your, your rated capacity. The wire rope strength well. And the swing position of the boom. You know, we had the swing sensor on there. We're tracking the position of the boom around the chassis. And of course, the chassis has less stability over the side than it does over the front and rear. So that becomes a factor in the load chart. So then we have system alarm settings. I think every manufacturer has these. All of our systems work on 90% on, uh, of rated load equals a yellow light and a pulsating alarm tone. Uh, alarm two at 100% uh, is a red light, a steady alarm tone with function lockout. Okay? The functions we lock out are any function that will worsen the overload or get it higher off the ground. Okay. Any of those will affect that. Some systems are equipped with operator settable alarms, like the RCI 510. Uh, most of the time now, there are getting to be some exceptions now, but originally designed, those were warning systems only with no function kickout. Nowadays, they're starting to kick out swings and things like that, which is something I personally disagree with, but uh, who am I? So those are your alarm settings. That's backed up with a bar grab on every display we have now. We're having bar grabs. Uh, they all operate under the system of green for normal operation, yellow for 90%, and red for 100% of overload. Every one of them. Even the, the new element and insights, uh, the whole inside of the bar graph will turn green or yellow or red as an indication. And we can see that on the displays up here later. Do I have any questions on that or comments? So, so let's recap that a little bit. First of all, moment is the product of a twisting motion about the axis or point. Moment equals force times distance. And I'm pretty sure Brian covered that off with you earlier too. Total moment equals the boom moment plus the load moment. And load moment equals the total moment minus the boom moment. Now, here's a biggie too. For maintenance of these systems, well, we've got to have a few special tools. The special tools that's required to work on a grid system are a digital level that's accurate within one tenth of a degree. Uh, I'll tell you, Sears has a really nice uh, digital level. I personally have one of those. I've had it uh, laboratory calibrated three years in a row now, and it's been perfect. It's never done an adjustment on it. Uh, about 45 or 50 bucks. You know, it's an excellent tool. Uh, you need a tape measure that measures in tenths. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm not, a, I'm no mathematician, so it's hard for me to calculate tenths in feet 
corn into eighths or whatever it is. So I buy a tape measure from Home Depot that costs me about 20 bucks that's 200 feet long and it, and it measures in tenths of a foot. So when I pull a measurement, what I'm measuring is exactly what I'm seeing on the display, okay? I absolutely cannot do a calibration and stop and calculate every measurement in my head or otherwise, okay? So a, a tape measure in tenths is always available, always, always uh, advisable. And you need a digital voltmeter. This should, you should have about three decimal places on your voltmeter in order to get the accuracy we need. 